Today on Dotto Tech, how we record our videos, part D. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, you could probably do at least as good a job diving as this guy. We're gonna talk today about creating our YouTube videos, answering the most common question we get here on the channel, which is how do you make your videos specifically? How do you create the kind of classic Dotto Tech look with the speaking head in front of the software that is so many of our videos showcases? Now in our last video, we showed you the hardware that's involved in creating the style of video which we do for YouTube, which is called screencasting. We're gonna continue that dialogue today by talking about the software and how we actually record our videos. Now, if you want to see the video about uh, how we do all of our hardware, there'll be a link in the description as well. I recommend that you subscribe to our channel. That way you can hear about not just that video, but all the new videos. And hitting the notification bell means that you'll be informed when we upload new videos. So in our last video, as I said, we talked about the hardware involved, which is a video capture device, or we use a webcam in this particular case, our audio device, and the computer, and all of the different parts of the hardware that we use to record our screencasts. Now the term screencasting, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. It's the proper term for exactly how we create our video because we use screencasting software. Now we use a tool called ScreenFlow on the Mac to record and edit all of our video. It is screencasting software. You could also use Camtasia, which is a competitive product to ScreenFlow, and Camtasia has the benefit of being multi-platform. It's both Windows and Mac. Uh, they're both excellent products. I really don't have a preference to either one, although I've been using ScreenFlow longer and it is the one that I choose to use. So ScreenFlow allows us to capture all of the different digital assets and record our video in real time. And it's really important understanding the recording process because unlike kind of traditional video where you shoot your video on a camera, store the video on a memory card with the audio attached, sometimes the audio is separate, uh, and then you import all of that into a piece of editing software where you edit it, unlike that, with screencasting software, you actually record all of the digital assets in the software that you're gonna edit in. And I'm gonna show you in just a few moments a, a little video that I recorded just before I started doing this demonstration to show you how all of the different parts come together. But essentially what happens is we launch a screencasting recording session. Our camera fires up, our microphone fires up, anything else that we have plugged in, such as a smartphone that we have plugged in where we wanna capture the screen, it fires up, plus the software records what it sees on the computer screen. And then it records all of these different assets synchronously. In other words, it re records them in real time so that they're all synced to each other so that when we go to edit them, we don't have to assemble them as far as time goes. They're already where they appeared in time in relationship to each other. Perhaps I'd better show you. Actually, let me show you the video that I just recorded a few moments ago to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this is ScreenFlow after it recorded the demonstration that I just showed you. And actually, if we kind of get a little bit meta right now, it's actually doing the same thing right now in real time to what you're watching. It's, it's recording all of these different assets for me right now. But this is what I saw this is what it recorded last time. The very top track here, this is the video track that was captured from my video camera. The next track that we see here, this is my smartphone. Uh, one of the questions we get asked a lot is how do you record your phone screens or your tablet screens? This is, how, this is the, the recording that we did there and the software will record it as well. And the one in the back here, the very bottom, this is my computer screen that was recorded that I'm looking at right now uh, on my desktop. So there's my different three different digital assets are all recorded in real time. So let me just play this back to you so you can kind of see uh, where each of the parts fits right now. All right, here's a quick demonstration of the different layers and the different digital assets that we can record in real time. Obviously we're getting audio from the microphone we're recording the computer screen, and at the same time, we are, because I have it plugged in by lightning cable, we're also recording 
the, uh, my, my smartphone. Now, this could be an Android phone, this could be an iPad or a tablet. In my case, it's my iPhone 8. So we've got, or 8 Plus. Uh, so we've got each of these different assets being recorded in real time, along with the video, of course. And the beauty of this is this is all synced in the same time. So if I go to my phone right now, as I'm talking about it, and I say, let's go in and let's take a look at my Evernote account, and I open Evernote, when I tap here on my phone screen to open Evernote to my chili recipe, because I was cooking chili yesterday, uh, that's the document I have open, but you see it happening in real time so that I can demonstrate it. Similarly, if I go to the computer screen right now, and if I say I'm gonna, I'm preparing to do a demonstration on Google Keep, and I want to show you something in the menuing system within Google Keep, I can do it right here by clicking here and uh, by doing it all in real time. And we can do camera moves in and out to highlight exactly what we're talking about by zooming in and out on the screen using the screencasting camera controls. This is the essence of screencasting, this pulling together a complete narrative and syncing it all in time so it, that it all happens. Uh, and so it's easy for us to edit and kind of build out the story. The timeline and multi-track editor is really the heart of how this all pulls together. The fact that we've recorded and brought in all of these digital assets that are all synced in real time with each other, and then we can layer in other assets such as photographs, other B-roll video, any other, some music, a music bed underneath, anything else that we want to roll in, we now have the ability to add as well. All right, so now you get an idea for how all of those different parts came to be. Let me explain the software to you now because that's the essence of actually creating these screencasts. Here in ScreenFlow, the center section you see that you were actually watching that replay just in moments ago, that's our playback window or our preview window where we can see all of our edits happening in real time. Beneath it here is the timeline where we assemble all of our digital assets. And there's two relationships that happen here. Linearly is time passing by and you can see that we have a playhead here that scrolls ahead to the different parts of the video. And then, the, uh, and then we have a stack of one on top of the other of the different digital assets in these tracks. And we can arrange where they appear in the foreground or background by moving them up or down in these tracks. Let me just adjust, let's actually take the background image and let's move it to the top. And you'll see that it then appears above. You see how we, we can move it foreground or background. So you can layer your items through this control. So that's kind of the basic main motor controls for creating screencasts. Over here on the right hand side, this is where we have all of our tools and all of our other digital assets. This is where we can go and we can actually make edits and modify what we see on the screen for everything like creating a key for a, for a, for a green screen key so that my, the background disappears and my head pops over top of whatever's behind, all the way through to moving assets on screen, creating titles and text and simple animation and importing other elements such as graphics uh, that we or animations that we want to insert in the video. So this is a simple video editing tool. Now it's not quite as advanced as a Final Cut Pro or a Premiere Pro for doing movie type or TV show type video editing. But for creating tutorial videos, for creating the sort of videos that we create on YouTube, this is gold. And here I'm going to show you the reasons the control we have over each and every element. So let me kind of walk through that. And I'm actually just gonna use the video that we showed you a few moments ago uh, as a basis. So let's begin with our most common question is how do you create your head floating over top of the background, Steve? Well, that is using a technique called green screen or chroma keying. And so what happens here is I'm gonna select my video track, which we see right here, and I've got total control over this track. I can make the image larger, smaller, I can move it around all through these controls. So I'm just gonna scale it a bit larger. I'm gonna position it here kind of on the side. I'm going to go down and I'm first of all gonna turn off, it creates a drop shadow. It's kind of a peculiarity within this particular tool. I don't know why it does it this way, but it creates a drop shadow automatically. So I'm just gonna turn that off because we don't want that for the green screen. But then I'm gonna go into my video filters and I'm gonna apply a chroma key filter. When I add that, it looks at for all of the green area and it drops it out. Look at that, look how easy it is to create a really quick green screen. And you can actually select different colors if you had say a blue background or a different color background that would, uh, would then allow us to key out 
that solid color. Now, in this particular case, I had a little bit of shoot off over the, my shoulders. I hear, actually, if I put the video here, you can see I have a little bit of shoot off there. So I can go in here and I can crop the image just a little bit so that we can't see it anymore. How cool is that? There we go, just cropped a little bit. And now this video is ready to drop over top of everything else as we're doing it. So that it's that easy for me to create a green screen. So that's step one. Step two is making the computer screen a star of the video. So I'm gonna move ahead here to where I was showing the background. There it is, So where I'm showing that. Now I'm actually gonna take my video image here and I'm gonna say at this point here, when we're starting to talk about this, I want my video to get smaller. So watch what I do. I'm gonna create something called a video action. I'm doing this on my head, on my speaking head here. So I'm gonna create an action. I'm just gonna grab the sizing handle here and I'm gonna resize this video down to here and I'm gonna slide it out to the side so that I am pretty much out of the way of the action on screen. Now that creates a video action and this is something that we can use as part of our storytelling process. So watch what happens to the video here as we do this. I'm gonna hit play. We'll keep. I, do you see how I move down? And I, so we've got total control over moving all of these assets around. But let's say that what I really wanted to do at this point here was I wanted to showcase what I was showing on the computer screen as well. So obviously I've got the phone screen here still in the layer. What I, I don't really want that there. So I'm just gonna turn down the opacity on the phone screen so it disappears. And I'm gonna wanna try and draw your eye to this new list area here where I'm about to click to create a new list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the layer, which is my ba most background layer, which is the computer screen as it was being recorded. And I'm gonna do just what I did to my head. I'm gonna create a video action and I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcuts now and I'm gonna zoom it larger. Uh, so I'm just using keyboard shortcuts because this is the way I really do things. I'm gonna make it larger and I'm gonna position it here and I'm gonna make it a little bit larger still so that I wanna draw everybody's eye to that new list graphic that appears here. So watch what happens now when I, when I talk about storytelling, watch what happens to this move. My head gets smaller and the computer screen draws out drawing your eye to the, to, the, to the label on that screen. So let's play, we'll keep. I can do it right here by See clicking that? here and uh, by doing it all in real time. So that is the essence of how we create our videos. We use all a screencasting tool like ScreenFlow to record all of the different digital assets in real time that are all laid down in a timeline synchronously in our screencasting software. Then we go through and we edit them. We modify the different digital assets until it tells the story we want. Now, before we leave you today, a couple of things that I wanna do. First of all, I wanna take you and show you the last video. Now this is our video on the hardware that we use, but this is what the video looks like before it gets published to YouTube. So you can see how many different digital assets we have and all of the layering and all of the different transitions that are involved in telling one of our stories. This is what one of our videos looks like as it's been completed editing before we go through the final uh, rendering process and upload it to YouTube. So you could get an idea for kind of the sophistication that you can create with a simple tool like ScreenFlow in this particular case. Once you've finished the video, as we've done in this particular case, we take all of this information and we either publish it directly to whatever channel it is we're looking to publish to, or we export it as a video and then we can upload it to whatever channel we want. That's kind of the final step in the editing process is outputting the video once it's been completed. Now, if you want more details on the hardware that we use, we have a link in the description below to our uh, to my toolkit, which goes through all of the different hardware and software tools that I use uh, to run my entire business. And next show, we are gonna be showing you how we publish this to YouTube and what we do to make sure that not only it's published cleanly and effortlessly to YouTube, but we're also make sure that it's gonna be discovered on YouTube and people are gonna find us and subscribe to our channel. And we use these videos to help grow our community. That's gonna be the whole picture of how we publish on YouTube. Three part series, part two is now done. Remember, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you'll hear about our upcoming videos. If you have any comments or questions, share them below. We love to see them and I do read each and every comment. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.